What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news video and Portuguese journalists are claiming that Ruben Amorim's agent is in talks with Liverpool to sign a freer contract for his client today. So on Monday the noise around Ruben Amorim is only growing louder, louder and the latest claims from Portugal suggest that Liverpool hope to reach an agreement with Ruben Amorim's agent and representatives this week. And of course the fact that Sporting beat Benfica lately in the Portuguese uh, title race and they, now, now they are four points clear with one game in hand and also they are in the Portuguese cup final that basically guarantees Sporting at least one maybe even two trophies this season so Ruben Amorim would want to leave Sporting on a good note uh, winning them titles and of course it makes uh, Ruben Amorim even more attractive as the potential next Liverpool manager and in this video we will take a detailed look uh, about these reports and also we will analyze the title race because I have the Arsenal, the Liverpool and the Man City fixtures and I can come up with reasons why any of these sides won't win the Premier League title. Well, whoever be will be the most consistent will be the one to win the title but I think there are still many twists and turns and the fact that we are still one point ahead of Man City is crucial because that means that it's you know it's li still in Liverpool's hands. If we win all our games then I think uh, Liverpool will win the title because Arsenal will definitely drop points. Arsenal have won only two away games against top 10 teams this season so yeah we will take a detailed look at the title race as I said and Portuguese journalist Pedro Sapoveda has claimed that uh, Sporting and Liverpool hope to reach a full agreement on the terms of the contract sorry uh, Ruben Amorim's agent and Liverpool hope to reach a full agreement on the terms of the contract this week with a meeting between Amorim's agent and Liverpool scheduled for today so how these things work first we want to fre fresh out the contract details with Amorim and once that's settled we will go to Sporting and we will negotiate with them basically a release clause is in place for Ruben Amorim to leave Sporting if it's uh, not a Portuguese club then the release clause is like half of what it is for Portuguese clubs and it's around 10 to 12 million pounds and that wouldn't be a problem for Liverpool we have more than enough pound of money to pay that and you also have to credit the journalist as pretty reliable because he did help break the Luis Diaz to Liverpool story when Luis Diaz was playing for Porto and he also broke the story of Darwin Nunez who was playing for Benfica going to Liverpool so this is a pretty credible journalist that we are talking about. It is stated that Sporting's dramatic last minute 2-1 victory over Benfica has enabled negotiations to speed up with Amorim's, Amorim uh, with Sporting now four points clear with a game in hand over Benfica and they just need 15 points from the last seven games so as I said they can drop six more points and still win the Portuguese title even if Benfica won win all of their games this will also almost certainly involve uh, only Amorim's agents and one would imagine Amorim's focus will be firmly on closing out the season so usually the managers not don't, don't directly negotiate with clubs at this early stage usually it's the agent and representative but they fully know what Amorim wants because they will this they would have discussed the details Fabrizio Mano posted an update on Ruben Amorim's release clause or contract situation it's a 30 million euro release clause only valid for clubs in Portugal it's 20 million for clubs from abroad verbal pact in case of top club proposal 10 million release clause could be enough to let Ruben Amorim leave in the summer sorry that's not a release clause that's basically uh, sporting and and Ruben Amorim have a verbal agreement that if a really top club comes in for Ruben Amorim then they won't have to pay the 20 million euro release clause which is around 16 17 million pounds so that's quite a substantial amount of money and Sporting's final game of the season will be the Portuguese Cup final which is on May the 26th and that's uh, four days after a potential Europa League final appearance for Liverpool but uh, a week after Liverpool's final league game so yeah when Sporting finishes the season then Ruben Amorim could almost straight away be appointed as the next Liverpool manager because 
Jurgen Klopp would have played his last game with Liverpool. I'm, I'm just getting emotional even thinking about it. And this is actually good news that uh, Amorim has a verbal agreement with Sporting because that would uh, have Liverpool a further 8.5 million pound discount on his uh, release clause active for clubs from abroad, so clubs from not, not Portugal. So it's, if it's only a 10 million fee to get Ruben Amorim instead of a 20 million euro fee, that's I, I think a very substantial discount. And Ruben Amorim was very directly asked by journalists uh, that does the win against Benfica encourage him to stay on at Sporting? And he says, I always want to answer, but these th are things, there are things that I can't really answer. Last year we came in fourth place and I thought I had to do something different. It couldn't be the same. And Amorim didn't want to le leave Sporting in that state. And I want to offer further insight into how good of a manager Ruben Amorim is, because Portuguese football journalist Tom Kundert said that Amorim has the right tools to become the one of the best managers in world football. He has just been superb for Sporting and he has done it now over quite a substantial, substantial period of time. This is his fourth season with Sporting. He has got all the attributes to be the next big thing and you could even say he has kind of changed Portuguese football. If you just look at his record he has almost been a bit of a miracle worker winning a Portuguese cup with Braga having only been their manager for like 12 or 13 games and also beating uh, the big three Sporting, Benfica and Porto in the league with Braga made Sporting take notice and then they signed him for a release clause at that time they paid around 10 million euros to Braga and Sporting's uh, choice was vindicated because they have won the league title after 19 years of not winning the Portuguese title I remember the last time Portuguese side Sporting won a league title it was actually a Hungarian manager Laszlo Bölöni who was their manager so I, I remember that time quite well so Sporting fans waited a long long time to end that uh, title drought and uh, now they could have their second league title in four years which would be a magnificent achievement and Adrian Bishop another English journalist is reporting this in the Daily Mail that Liverpool are meeting with Ruben Amorim's agent today to discuss uh, the contract terms and everything the clause the contract length will be three years that's reported with an additional one more year so as a fourth year as a potential uh, you know clause in the contract that Liverpool can extend a Ruben Amorim's contract with one third year if he's doing well which is I think very sensible and it's a really good news also guys let me know how do you feel one day after Liverpool dropping two points to Manchester United uh, I thought that we would lose after Mino scored that wonder goal after Bruno Fernandes scored another wonder goal what it is that Man United always score wonder goals against Liverpool but I actually looked up Liverpool's record on the Jurgen Klopp away at Old Trafford and in what nine years we have won only two games there two Premier League games and that coincidentally came back to back but the last time before Jurgen Klopp the last time Liverpool won at Man United was 2014 so in the past 10 years we have only won twice away at o uh, Old Trafford, away at Man United. I mean at a, in a competitive game, not a preseason friendly or anything like that. And also, I looked it up, since uh, the early 2000s, Liverpool get one win in five years on average away at Old Trafford. So it's brutally difficult to win there. Even when Liverpool won the title with 99 points in 2020, we didn't win at Old Trafford. We had 27 wins and one draw in our first 28 games and that one draw was away at Man United and we needed an Adam Lallana late equalizer to actually draw there so even in that season which was the absolute miracle season nobody will ever repeat that 28 wins and one draw to start the season with 28 games is honestly unprecedented and it will never be matched I'm pretty convinced of that and even in that season we didn't win at Old Trafford so Liverpool don't usually win at Old Trafford so we have to just take it on the chin we have to swallow it and we have to hope that Arsenal won't win all of their games and there is a very good chance of that because Tottenham away, notorious difficult, is the North London derby, anything can happen. And also, they lost uh, to Aston Villa away, they lost to Newcastle away, they drew at Chelsea, Liverpool and Man City. So the only wins that they have against top 10 teams are Brighton and West Ham. They beat West Ham 6-0 and they beat Brighton.
Brighton 3 0. So these games uh, show me that they could beat probably Man United if they show up and if they take their chances, then they will probably beat Man United. But Tottenham away and Aston Villa at home and Chelsea at home, you know, Chelsea, Arsenal, Arsenal, Chelsea, those are always big London derbies. Um, that these are the three games that I'm looking at, hoping that Arsenal will drop points in at least two of them and that maybe Liverpool can win all of their games. But Liverpool's record away from home against uh, the top 10 teams is even worse because we only have Newcastle as our only win against top 10 teams. We drew at Brighton, we drew at Chelsea, we drew at Man United, we drew at Man City, we lost to Arsenal and we lost to Tottenham in that absolutely horrendous game. And the Tottenham game and the Brighton game, I remember those as games that we should have won if the referees did their job correctly. But yeah, we don't want to go on about the referees anymore. Hopefully they won't decide the title with their refereeing and hopefully the teams on the pitch will decide the run-in. Liverpool don't have the title race in their hands, but I think if, uh, I mean, Aston Villa away and West Ham away is going to be notoriously tough. And Fulham away is not an easy ground to go to. Fulham beat Arsenal as well. And yeah, Everton away is also a game where Liverpool don't usually win. We only have, uh, yeah, two wins against Everton in nine years as well. So our record is similarly horrendous there <laughs> as it is at Old Trafford. So yeah, Liverpool have tougher fixture list than Man City, but an easier fixture list than Arsenal. The problem is Arsenal are in much better goal scoring form than Liverpool. That's my biggest worry with Liverpool, that until Jota is back, until Salah and Nunez really starts firing in front of goal, that will be a problem, that we just don't take most of our chances in a game. So Liverpool have Tottenham at home, which is a tough fixture, and Everton away, West Ham away, Aston Villa away. So that's three very, very tough fixtures, four, sorry, four very tough fixtures for Liverpool that we have to contend with. Man City, I mean, Man City have only beaten Newcastle, West Ham and Man United out of the top 10 teams. Uh, and you know, I, I can see Man City dropping points, but I don't really expect it. But Man City lost to Wolverhampton away. They lost to Aston Villa. They lost to Arsenal. They drew with Liverpool. They should have lost that game if the referee gave that Doku penalty, Doku uh, kick on McAllister's chest. But Man City go to Tottenham and Guardiola have only won there once in the FA Cup and they didn't even score a goal in the Premier League and Tottenham need the points to finish in the top four so yeah that is going to be a tough game for Man City the others I expect them to win Fulham away Nottingham Forest away Brighton away I mean these are games that Man City will probably win Luton at home that's a banker Wolves and West Ham at home that's also I, I just expect Man City to win every game I think we need a Man City to drop uh, one more time points because I, I don't I just don't trust Liverpool right now to win eight games in a row we can do it I just don't trust us to do it because this team still doesn't feel ruthless, ruthless enough to to do it we, we still don't have uh, that ruthless cutting edge that we had when we got to 97 or 99 points um, but yeah, at the moment Man City are back as favorites for the title, even though they are third. They have now a 40% chance of winning the title. Liverpool have a 30% chance, Arsenal 20 and 29%. So yeah, very close actually. That's uh, Opta's uh, prediction. Uh, Nielsen's Grace Note prediction is 42% chance for Man City, 30% chance of Liverpool and 28% chance of Arsenal. And I think it will be a big factor on uh, the Champions League games as well, uh, how much it takes out of Man City and, all, uh, and they play Real Madrid so that is going to be super tough for Man City because Real Madrid are in great form. Also, how much does the Bayern Munich two games take out of Arsenal? Bayern are not really in great form, they lost to Heidenheim after being 2-0 up, but the Champions League is their only chance of winning any trophy, so I expect Bayern to try everything to win that game, but Arsenal of course, they have never won the Champions League before, so I expect Arsenal to go hard in that game as well, and hopefully that will see them a little bit exhausted. 
Liverpool also have Atalanta home and away, and that's not an easy tie. Atalanta are very strong. They are a good team in the Serie A. Liverpool should be beating them, but I expect a very close tie, and I don't think it will be very comfortable for Liverpool, especially if we don't finish our chances. So let's see what uh, happens. And you know what's weird? Last season, at this stage, Arsenal were favourites. Uh, they had a 55% chance of winning the title. Man City had a 45% chance. But then, at this stage last season, at the beginning of April, Arsenal started dropping points and they, they dropped like a stone and Man City won all of, almost all of their games on their way to win the title. Hopefully this time Arsenal will start dropping points as well and hopefully Liverpool can start a winning run which will last 8 games. That is going to be super tough but hopefully Liverpool can do it. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video, have a nice day, see you later, goodbye!